Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is the Roaming Prepper channel, and I wanted to thank you for joining me yet again for one of my rants. Actually, this is preparedness, but not the way we normally think about it. And there have been things that have happened recently. Um, most of us have discussed this at one point or another but are among the creators but i just want to refresh everyone as we get into the election season i'll be right back and let's talk about what this prep non-prep is hey welcome back everybody and once again don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what I've put down, leave me a thumbs up. You could put a thumbs down. You want to put poop emojis in the comments. I, we've, I've said that once before, and I actually got poop emojis in the comments. Feel free to do that as well. I normally premiere these videos, but sometimes I don't make my own premiere because of my work commitments. So if I'm not in the premiere, feel free to leave your comments and questions below the video after if you're part of the replay gang. So what am I talking about? The prep that's not a prep or not what we normally think. It's your IT security. Um, there have been reports, and you can just look in the news yourselves. This has been going on f almost since just before the war between uh, our two friends in Europe and then now the more recent war in the Middle East. Um, the pipeline hack, the target hack, Capital One, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There have been some companies recently that have also had cybersecurity incidents of various types have been taken offline. It interrupted their operations, whatever. Um, a few things we as individuals can do to be prepared for that kind of incident. And, and one thing which I sometimes I'm guilty of and I didn't think of, and I spoke to some people, including family members who have been involved in either IT or cybersecurity type work. Um, one, when you're done with your computer, try to remember to shut it off. One, it's good because it helps you reset. I know some of you have multiple windows and like, oh, I got to find all these bookmarks again. And yeah, I get it. But it's good to at least shut it down, if not every night, every few days so that systems can reset, any updates can occur. And basically, if it's shut down, its IP address cannot be pinged. It's not online. Even if it's in a sleep mode, my understanding is certain hackers can ping it or attack, try to attack it. Or now that they know it's online, they wait for it to come back online and they immediately jump on it. So it's a good practice to shut it down if you can. not Another thing you can do, and I don't have it with me. I thought, oh yeah, I do have it with me. Um, this in here is my backup hard drive. I have a one terabyte drive. I put my YouTube channel stuff on there, TikTok, all that stuff. But I also put uh, PDFs of insurance, photocopies of driver's license, uh, passports, stuff like that. I try to keep up with it. I sometimes fail. It's probably got to update this this next month. Seems like a good time to do it. Also, recent PDF copies or other versions of your emergency phone list, as well as bank account statements. Now, I also encourage you once a month to print out your bank account statements, your banks, credit cards, uh, investment accounts, whatever it is that you may have online. So you at least have a validation, verified hard copy that I did have accounts at this bank. These were the amounts in these banks as of this date. Now, obviously you get paid on the first, by the 15th, you probably use them some of the money. So it'll be a different amount. That's fine. Being able to show, hey, I did have paychecks come into this bank. I have funds. I have this, I have that. That really helps you if you have to make a claim with the FDIC or insurance or the bank or whatever. Um, also have hard copies of not just the bank accounts, but emergency phone numbers, if you can remember to do it. There was a time I had to memorize all my phone numbers. Now we don't. We get spoiled. We put them in our phone and forget the number other than maybe two or three that we call all the time. You probably couldn't tell me off the top of your head what your cousin's phone number was, even though you may talk once a week, right? Because you just don't use the numbers. You say, you know, call Sarah, call Tom, and the phone calls that person. So having a hard copy of that and a PDF somewhere, not a bad practice. And it's going to take some time to start doing that. Um, 
Also, like uh, another thing to point out, and again, this is more down the uh, rabbit hole, but this is actually a uh, a uh, e electromagnetic resistant bag. I've actually tested this one on another video. I'll try to remember to put the link up here. Um, but um, I put a phone, I FaceTimed my own phone, it rang, and then I closed the bag, FaceTimed it again, and you couldn't hear the phone anymore. It literally blocked the signal. It actually didn't even show up on Where's My Friends. Uh, the phone was gone. It went off the grid. So I put that in there. Do I expect an EMP? Mm, who the hell knows? Um, but also, even for surges, lightning strikes, failures at the power plant that send a surge down power lines, totally possible any day of the week, just from human error, uh, having a backup of your important data in a secure place, not on the grid, not attached to the power grid or the internet, not a bad idea. I do recommend, if you can financially afford it, times are hard, <laughs> shit, interest rates right now, any interest rate under 10% is actually good because a lot of people are getting ridiculous rates. Um, having cash, if you can have cash, always a good thing. Also, pay down debt as much as you can so you minimize your exposure to any issues that may occur. Change your passwords regularly. Um, don't make everything the same password, right? If it's, you know, McMuffin123, don't put McMuffin123 on everything because somebody will eventually figure it out. Also, while we're talking about passwords for bank accounts, and pretty much every bank and financial institution will do this, as will Google, YouTube, Facebook, a lot of these, is two-factor authentication. So if someone tries to sign in on a new machine, it's going to send you either an email or a text to your phone or to your iPad, and you have to verify that that is indeed yours. That's a good practice. Um, I actually had a bunch of points from all my travel on a hotel chain, and uh, I get an email saying, hey, uh, congratulations on your purchase of a PS5. I'm like, I didn't purchase a PS5. Um, I was kind of intrigued that I could do that, but I was like, I didn't do that. So I looked, sure enough, someone had tried to spoof me. I called it in. Um, it turns out that the um, they were somehow able to convince the system that they were me. I don't remember how they did it. And uh, I put two-factor authentication, so that couldn't happen again. And um, long story short, I got the points back. They canceled the order. I actually should have told them to send me the PS5. I'm like, well, it's my points to so just send it here. Um, I might still do that. But anyway, side, side topic, side quest. Um, Remember to put that authentication, change your passwords. Um, also, for certain accounts, especially bank and financial, make sure you have a next of kin, uh, wife, husband, adult child, someone responsible and trustworthy in the event something happens to you and you are incapacitated. Um, if something happens to me, obviously, first it's my wife, then it's my my two of my kids who I believe are quite responsible, um, but they have different knowledge bases. And that's why I picked the two kids. Um, because if something happens, it'll become a very major hardship for your family to try to figure out your password, go to the bank, get everything, be able to pay bills. Because remember, your mortgage is still due. Your car payment may still be due. You still got to buy groceries, whether you're in the hospital or not. So making that available to the family and having those contingencies in place is a big deal. And lastly, sad topic, but important, and we need to discuss it, end of life decisions, uh, wills, trusts, even a letter of intent uh, that's notarized that says, you know, notary is what, 20 bucks? Write out a letter saying, in the event this happens, I bequeath my belongings to my spouse or to my three children to divide as they see fit. Um, or at least say, you know, the bank accounts are accessible by my spouse or my children uh, so that they can make decisions uh, that way they're not struggling. And again, this is a bit of a somber topic, but people, we don't think about it. Um, you know, I'm not young, but I try, I'm on the road all the time. And all of us know that accidents happen. I'm a good driver. I pay attention. I got a good vehicle. I keep it in good condition. But the jackass next to me might be a drunk uh, crackhead and is having sex in the car while driving. I'm not being facetious, but you get what I'm saying. And he wipes out and takes 10 other people with him. 
my could be one of them. You need to be able to plan for that stuff. So your family, they're already going to be suffering from the loss of her, of you. At least you have stuff in place. I've seen it in my own family where these things were not done. And it was a major struggle for the widow. She couldn't access accounts. She didn't know where the bills were. Things weren't organized. Um, it made it very hard for her to make decisions and move things around and and you know fortunately she had family who could come in and had experience with this including me and my wife but you know this is this is it's tough and you don't want to add to the situation as it is so anyway remember passwords authentication wills intents backups hard copies you may not be able to do it all i get it but even if you have a usb drive you get one of those for 30 bucks and you put PDFs of a bunch of shit and hide it. You can wrap it in an aluminum foil if you need to and hide it if you're worried about EMPs and just hide it away. And, you know, every quarter update the documents if you need to. It's a smart plan. It saves you a lot of pain and keeps us prepped for the cyber world. In any case, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Be safe. Be careful out there. I'll put a link to the little bag in case you're interested. If you find one for a better price somewhere else, that's fine too. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it for this topic. I thought I was going to say something else, but uh, I think I covered it all. Anyway, you guys be good. Be safe. I will see you all on the next video. Mm -hmm.